Today, we take a new step in our revitalization plans with the support from the Michigan State Housing Development Authority. We hope that this will encourage a new wave of positive community and economic development uh, that is neighborhood-driven, supports the history of this neighborhood, and truly makes this one of the best places in the city to live. Quickly, I would like to point out three people who have been champions for our neighborhood. First, I'd like to recognize the contributions that have been made by our Congressman Dan Kildee and Amy Hovey. They've been responsible for over $34 million in reinvestment in Parish Town. Um, uh, today, those structures, I would say, might not actually stand or be productive uh, parts of our community. I'd also like to recognize David White. Is David here? There he is. David White is actually one of the uh, original founders of the Neighborhood Association, and um, uh, his efforts have actually helped protect the history of this neighborhood, and he continues to work with us today. So I'd like to thank David White as well. Just to match, we were here until 7.30 last night replanting the flower garden, so. And it was my birthday, too, so we're committed volunteers. Yeah. Also, um, I want to point out uh, local initiative support corporation, Sue Peters. Uh, this is actually part of LISC's uh, strategic investment area, um, and they've also been the backbone of a lot of these reinvestments that we've seen today, so thank you very much to LISC. Um, First, I'd like to introduce Jamika Patrick Singleton from Metro Community Development. They're actually the sponsor of this initiative. Metro Community Development has been a staple of this community since 1992. Metro is a housing and community development intermediary agency <coughs> with a focus on providing technical and financial resources, creating public and private partnerships, leading to the creation of stable neighborhoods and communities. The vision of Metro Community Development is building, is partnering to build vibrant communities. How many Northwestern grads do we have out there? <laughs> hey, great. So it's a pleasure to be back here. Uh, I still come back a lot, a lot of family around the area. I am especially pleased to be here uh, for this presentation today. Uh, I got to point out a few people that really make it successful, though. Lori Larpierre who is our Michigan neighborhood uh, uh, person, uh, and Joe Borgstrom, who is the director of our downtowns and uh, uh, community services. He's actually a Flint Metro native, uh, spent a lot of time here, actually worked in the city, didn't you, for a while? Yes, sir. And is a graduate of Flint U of M. Uh, so there you go. Uh, also, I uh, got uh, uh, um, our Chris Legrand and Bob Platty in the back, who are part of our rental development division. Chris is my counterpart. He's the chief housing investment officer. And actually, in this area, we've done a couple of rental developments, so it's pretty important. And then our, our, our communications team, Jennifer Bowman is here. She has our communications group. And she's got Katie uh, Bach, who is from the Flint area also, who's our communications manager. And then Mitzi and Melissa, they're the ones taking the pictures. And then uh, my very good friend, uh, Mark Garcia. Where's Mark? So Mark does our government relations. Did I miss any mission set? We like to come prepared when we come to an event. And one of the reasons that we're all, you see so many of us here today is because how we feel about Flint. It's a, an important community. Uh, we, we expect to do a lot of work here. As you know, the, the, Michigan, the, the Michigan Neighborhood Program, uh, this, is our, this is a very unique program. One of the only ones like it in the country. It is patterned after our very successful Michigan Main Street program. It's the combination of doing downtowns and near neighborhoods together and what that means for revitalization and attraction of people back into the city. Uh, we've done four. Two of them are in Flint, so it shows you how we feel. Uh, so I'd like to thank Michael and the rest of the crew. Uh, congratulations on being named another My Neighborhood program and wish you all the best. And I look forward to coming back and seeing just how things are flourishing. Thank you. It's great to be here this morning. Um, Any time that these kinds of efforts happen and the University of Michigan Flint gets to be involved, it's a win-win. It's a win for our students and our faculty and staff who live in this community. Um, our students have put hundreds of hours in, uh, partnering with Carriage Town Ministries through different volunteer projects. Our DPS, our Department of Public Safety, has been working with Michigan State and Kettering on a, uh, as we got a grant from the Depo Justice Department for um, all of the safety and security issues. Um, and our Chief of Police, if you've not met him, 
has just been a great community member and is really interested in working with the members of the community, not just the organizations, to create um, an environment that everybody feels like we're family in. So it's important to us as we continue to grow. Uh, it's important to, to our relationship with Kettering as on this quarter and to all of you who live in this community. So thanks so much for the opportunity to be here and partner with you and thanks Mishta for your investment in this community. Thank you, Michael. And it's an honor to represent Kettering President Robert McMahon and the entire Kettering University community on this exciting day for Carriage Town, for the University Avenue corridor, and for the city of Flint as a whole. Carriage Town is not only a significant part of Flint's amazing history, a thriving Carriage Town is also an important part of Flint's bright future. The neighborhood is an important connector of so many assets in the city, universities, hospitals, businesses, and attractions like the Children's Museum and Atwood Stadium, to the amazing energy and improvements happening in downtown Flint. Over the past three years, Kettering has been committed to working with numerous partners in making the University Avenue region a safe, walkable corridor that connects our students, faculty, and staff to the surrounding community. We are very excited that the state of Michigan has recognized the importance of Carriage Town to Flint's future through their selection of the Michigan Neighborhood Program. With so many individuals and organizations working together and sharing knowledge and lever leveraging resources, it is truly making a profound and inspirational difference for our city. Kettering will continue to support and to be engaged with the efforts of Carriage Town and all of our neighbors in the University Avenue region. We are all committed to the same goal, a thriving, vibrant Flint. Thank you. Wow, don't you like the noise in the background? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's a good sign. Shut it off. That, that is a sign of things changing around here. And uh, in this past year, we've done a lot here at Factory One. Um, it's an honor to be here today because two years ago when Mark Royce uh, made the decision to purchase Factory One, heading our North American operations, he wanted to preserve something that was an important part of the history of this uh, neighborhood, this community, uh, the state, and the global auto industry. I've told media in the past, this is the epicenter of the auto industry. You know, from the fur trading, to the lumber era, to carriages, to cars, and uh, today, with GM still in the Flint area, investing $1.6 billion uh, in our Flint operations. But I would tell you, there's an investment that we kept it under the radar, and that's the uh, Factory One facility here. To date, we've put in $2 million into this facility. We've restored the exterior. We've put in historically accurate windows and doors. Uh, we put a fence around the parking lot and we provide some uh, funding to uh, keep the uh, Durant Dort office um, up to date uh, and uh, credit to uh, Dave White and uh, his dedication. He has turned that uh, from a rentable space into a museum. Uh, our commitment in this area continues not just with the facade of the building but to the interior. I'm going to be a little coy here because I don't have an announcement to make about what's going to happen inside. We have gutted the interior. We have the historic wood beams and brick work exposed. Smith Group, who a number of you are familiar with, they do historical renovations around the world. U of M is very familiar with them with their master plan uh, for the last 50 years plus. And they're helping us devise uh, the interior use. It's going to harken to the days of the carriage time, and it's going to allow for a 21st century uh, use. Students, educators, researchers, um, events. Buick uh, is looking at this as a place where maybe they can hold some events. You know, we maybe we'll have banquets, we'll have uh, vehicles on display, wagon works, door cars, who knows. So the future is bright for this facility, this neighborhood, and this community, and it's an honor to be here today. So on behalf of General Motors and Mark Royce, uh, we want to uh, congratulate the Carriage Town uh, neighbors you know, on this uh, designation. We want to uh, commend our city, our state, and our federal officials for not only you know, looking at the potential of this neighborhood, but also putting their full efforts into the potential of this city, this downtown, and this community. So thank you very much.
Well, thanks and good morning, everyone. I also just want to acknowledge uh, all the residents and leaders who have who have stayed committed to Carriage Town and who have helped bring us to this day today. So thank you all for for your leadership there. Uh, Carriage Town neighborhood is one of the most distinctive historic areas in the state, as Michael described, for for a number of reasons. Um, this is also where Michigan's 20th century prosperity was born. It, it literally started on the streets that we'll walk through today. The entrepreneurs, the investors, the factories, the workers, and community all converged uh, right here in this spot. In today's reality, though, um, this area, it has struggled to revitalize in the 21st century. Uh, but I think today is, is a turning point. When you look at all the investment that's been made to date, the fact that the neighborhood is working together that we have our local, state, and federal officials all involved in, in a common plan. Um, the leadership, the planning, the investments, they're all aligning and will be strengthened by the technical assistance and support through the My Neighborhood program. I, I see this as another sign of Flint's rebirth. Uh, the city of Flint, we fully support the vision of Carriage Town again being a bustling and vibrant, diverse district with housing, businesses, families, students, and visitors. Uh, we have today um, VISTA members who are working in our Department of Planning and Development Department. We have Captain Golden, uh, who's acting as our Chief of Police while Chief Tolbert is away. So thank you all for being here. We'll continue to be strong partners with you um, in Carriage Town and along the University Avenue corridor. In addition to these historic and heritage sites, uh, the neighborhood also has pioneering businesses like Flint's First Cafe with Good Beans Cafe, Flint's First Microbrewery at Tenacity Brewing. It has proximity to downtown and University of Michigan Flint as well as the University Avenue corridor with Kettering and Atwood Stadium. Uh, we're literally standing on a portion of the Flint River Trail that connects out uh, towards Chevy Commons and, and further to the west. The Chevy Commons project is underway and will slowly make its way towards Carriage Town as funding is available to green that space um, coming back from Kettering University. So with all of these activities and investments, Carriage Town is still the crossroads of Flint. And again, I want to thank the neighbors, uh, the residents, the investors, uh, the land bank's early work in this area to help bring those efforts to scale. I think collectively, with the variety of initiatives around community development, economic development, public safety, community engagement, historic preservation, with all of that coming together, uh, Carriage Town's future is truly bright, and we look forward to doing everything we can to support that. Well, thank you, Michael, for that nice introduction, and uh, thank you all for being here. It's good to be home. Um, it's good to be back in the place and among the people that I really love. Not that I don't like Washington, um, but it's good to be back home. I think it's really important that we um, thank the state of Michigan, Michigan others for the, for the work in recognizing this neighborhood. You know, people are members of lots of communities. We're all Michiganders. We live and uh, work in, in Flint, but we really live in neighborhoods. Neighborhoods is the right metric, the right community to embrace and to really invest in, and I think particularly this one. Sort of all roads lead to Carriage Town because really for Flint, for this community, for this region, this is where it all began. And uh, two individuals who won't speak are the silent ones uh, over there. Who, uh, I saw one of them move just a minute ago. I think it was Billy. Um, it's really important that we recognize that we have to, at every level, embrace a new future for our community plan for that future, but we have to do it in a way that does not erase our past, but actually embraces it and celebrates our past and builds from our past. If we forget what made this place what it is, the spirit of these individuals, the people who lived in these houses, the people who used their creativity, their ingenuity to build something that changed the world, the American auto industry. Uh, we will miss the chance to make our future from our past and build on that and celebrate it. It is not something that should be in conflict. To be able to preserve a 
a neighborhood like this and build from it is not in conflict from us moving forward as a city. It's a necessity for us to move forward as a city. So the people that I really want to thank, obviously all the partners, people who have made contributions and will continue to contribute to the development of this neighborhood. But the people that we should thank are the people who live here, who live in this neighborhood. Not just because they live here, although that is the greatest contribution that they can make to this place, but because the residents of this neighborhood, let's just say they have some unique and, and common characteristics. They're tenacious. They don't give up. They don't give up on their city and they have never given up on this neighborhood. None of this would be happening. No one would invest, public or private, if there weren't a handful at one point, and now a growing number of people who are willing to put their lives, not just their money, where their principles are. And those are the folks who live here and the people who have really been driving this effort. So for them, thank you for, for keeping the faith, and it's up to us to continue to support your commitment. Thank you all very much. Thank you all for coming down today. Uh, thank you to all the elected officials who showed up as well um, and that support this neighborhood. Without you, we could not move forward. Um, we're actually going to have a walking tour, so those of you who want to stick around for the walking tour, I'll be leading people through. But first, we'd like to take a few short minutes for the media to have the opportunity to talk to um, the people here today, uh, neighborhood residents, people who support Carriage Town. And uh, once we actually conclude with those uh, the question and answer, we'll go ahead and do the tour. So again, thank you very much. Uh, come back to Carriage Town, like I said, we've got a microbrewery, we've got coffee shops, we've got other businesses here uh, that definitely want your attention. So thank you so much. starting at our new location at Kettering University and making its way down to the festival. Juneteenth, African American, independent. We need local talent. 239-2901. Officers, porters. 239-2901. Urban Dodgeball. Spoken Word. Citywide church outreach and vending opportunities still available. Call 239-2901. Call 239-2901. Juneteenth, a time to reflect and rejoice. Join the village. Celebrate African American Independence Day. June 19th through 21st in University Square. <laughs>